Now we're going to be talking about uh, three guys tonight. I want you to learn their names. Shadrach, say it. Shadrach. Meshach. Shadrach. And Abednego. Oh, say it again. Shadrach. Shadrach. Meshach. Meshach. And Abednego. Abednego. Now you say it. So now you guys know. Who are they? Nobody important, right? Three. Just some guys in the Bible? Three uh, Hebrew children. Three Hebrew children? No different than, than me. Except something extraordinary happened in their life because of one simple thing. Now, one of the things that uh, I have crossed in my life of who am I? We're going to find out who the three Hebrew children are, but who am I? I've looked at other people that are my superiors, or not my superiors, my, uh, what's the word? They're the same as me. They're my, my peers. They're nobody more special than I am. They're nobody uh, better than I am. But I look at them, and uh, I know you guys probably don't understand it, but through the Pentecostal Church of God, the organization, I've looked at kids, one of the names, uh, I don't want to say no names because in case they watch this video, but their dads were in, quote, power and leadership in the Pentecostal Church of God. I looked at those people as being better than I am because where their dad was, and not to slam anything from where my dad is, but they were in this big glorified position that I thought as a young kid. And I thought that they were more special than I was because their dad had a, I guess you would say, a better job than my dad had. Now, thank God, I have found out about three or four years ago that no, God knew what he was doing the whole time. They are not better than I am. I'm as good as they are. Maybe I'm better than they are. I don't know. I'm not saying that. But God has me where he wants me. And it takes obedience to be in that spot where God wants you to be. It takes you listening to what he says. Three Hebrew children. Shadrach. Say it. Shadrach. Okay, let's do it together. Ready? All right, so I picked out uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So Ethan, Trevor, and I'm going to use you, Stefan. Two of the guys that I picked out didn't show up. So you guys are going to be the three Hebrew children. Just wait over here. Uh, we got King Nebuchadnezzar already picked out. I'm going to need two Roman guards. Girls, do you want to be guards? Yeah! This, is, this is kind of a guy's story because... So Amanda, where you at? She back there. Go on back there and see if Amanda's. You boys stay out here. You can go on back there. And I need uh, I need one more. Oh man, I need another guy. No, you're going to be King Nebuchadnezzar. Boo, everybody say boo. boo. King Nebuchadnezzar. And then uh, let me use Isaac. Amanda. Call her on the phone. Hey Amanda. Go ahead and follow them. Tell her to pick. One's gonna be one's gonna be three is gonna be Nebuchadnezzar, or three is gonna be Nebuchadnezzar. They're not sharing the role. Three are gonna be the Hebrew children, and one is gonna be king. So I'm also gonna need some uh, some other helpers. Hey, remember a long time ago I said I was gonna tell you a Bible story and I changed it to a Bible truth because the story just sounds made up and untrue. But you know what? It's in the Bible that makes it true. So Therefore, it's not just a story, it's something that happened, that really happened, that was written down for us 2,000 years later to be able to say, oh, I remember this story. In Daniel chapter 3, if you guys got your Bibles, because we're not going to be using that screen. When you got to say amen. Give me a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. Do this. This is easier. Daniel chapter 3. Did you guys find it yet? Electronics works. Not yet. Okay, so you can find this truth. 
You can find this story in Daniel chapter 3. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. i got to find this one part. Okay, I'm going to need uh, one, two, three, four, five, five people. I'm going to need five more hours. Okay, so let me use uh, Jaden. Let me use all you boys. Five of you boys. There's five boys. You four, come on, Ethan. And Liam. Come up here. You come up here with me. Okay, I need one of you to get on the piano. One of you can get on the piano, whoever wants to do it. You're not going to get in trouble. One of you can grab the guitar. Hey, girls want to be guards. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. So let's turn this piano up because I want everybody to hear it. Okay, it's all the way up. Just hit it hard. When I tell you to. All right, not yet. All right, one of you get on the drums. So as a part of this, you can uh, stay over there by the Congress. Okay, stay over there by him. Okay, I need everybody out in the middle. So there's a part of this where I'm going to say, all right, music, go. When I do, you guys start playing. Do it. Ready? One, two, three, go. All right, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give him a hand. All right. Now when I say stop, stop. Very good. Go. Stop. All right, good. All right, I'm gonna use you two girls as guards. It would just look good. It would just twins. I mean, that, that's that just fits. All right, so you can uh, you can stand right here on each side of these steps. Yes, you two ladies, Samantha and Savannah. Why don't you stand here? Oh, you need to go back there with Amanda. She's got clothes for you, an outfit for you to put on. Run back there. Hurry. All right. So let me tell you a story. There is a story about a mean king named Nebuchadnezzar. He was uh, taking over some land. And he had his own plan, his own agenda for the way he wanted things to go. Now, you guys notice over here to my left, to your right, that I have a giant snowman. Not because I'm celebrating Christmas or haven't taken down my lights, even though we just took down our lights Saturday. But don't judge me for that. All right, music, play! All right, stop. So make sure they're still listening. All right. So, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a thing where he uh, he was a big shot, okay? And there's three guys that worked for Nebuchadnezzar, and their names were... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, and their names were... Shadrach. All right, piano player. Stop. All right, he didn't get the, uh, the, the, uh, the message earlier to stop. So, King Nebuchadnezzar had a rule. Go ahead and bring up the... The king. Now, when I say King Nebuchadnezzar, he wasn't a good guy, okay? So, when I say King Nebuchadnezzar, shh. When I say King Nebuchadnezzar, you guys say, boo! Like you don't like him, ready? All right, bring out King Nebuchadnezzar! Oh, come on, you can do better than that. We don't like him, ready? I know, but he's. All right, bring out King Nebuchadnezzar! All right, there he is, King Nebuchadnezzar. That's Grace. She did that on purpose. All right, Grace, get out of the way. Send out King Nebuchadnezzar. That's why we shouldn't put Grace in charge. I wasn't in charge. That's why we shouldn't put it whoever. So here's what we're going to do. You girls, you like the king. You boys, you don't like the king. So we can get some definition here, all right? So when I say King Nebuchadnezzar, point to the girls, you cheer and say, long live the king. Ready? One, two, three. Long live the king. Ready? King Nebuchadnezzar. Long live the king. Long live the king. Okay, ready, boys? Boo. Ready? Boo. Wait. Ladies and gentlemen, King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, well, see, King Nebuchadnezzar, he liked to be in charge of things. Well, he's a king. Of course he liked to be in charge of things. He had a rule. Now, see, King Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to do my own thing. So I don't believe in the God of the Israelites. So I'm going to set up my own king. I'm going to create my own king. 
Now, I don't know the exact definitions, but I read something that said that it was uh, 90 feet tall and like uh, 16 feet wide or something like that. So this statue, this golden statue, was going to be a whole lot bigger than our snowman there. It was 90 feet tall. I mean, I'm trying to think of... I think if we took the church from the corner all the way back to this corner and we just turned it up like this, then the statue would probably be about that tall. Would that be pretty close? Yeah. We don't know. Here, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Am I going to do that? No, I'm not going to do that. All right. King Nebuchadnezzar! Alright, so there was a rule that the king put in place. He said, you know what? I've created this statue. I've created this idol. And you know what? When you hear, here we go, let's read all the instruments. It says, uh, Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, uh, sack, yeah, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, the people the nations and all the languages fell down and worshiped the golden calf. So here's what we're going to do. Whenever whenever I say music play, you guys bow to the idol. Get on your knees if you want or whatever, but you're bowing to the idol because that's what all the land did, is they bowed to the idol that the king had set up. Okay? Right? Now what are we going to do? All right, so let's get you some horns on here because it wasn't a piano. It was horns. Burn, baby, burn. All right, 
So we got the fiery furnace lit. Right, just in case, because I doubt anybody's going to disobey your rule because you are the king. But just in case they do, I want to light it. So I want to show you a fiery furnace. So this is what he said. We're going to light a fiery furnace, and this is, a, this is what a fiery furnace would be. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because in just a minute, I'm going to show you something else to explain that point. So fiery furnace. So if you don't, anybody want to feel how hot this is? No. How many would like to stick their hand in this flame? No. I'm not talking about real fast. I'm talking about where you just stick it in. And burn it. See, just like that. That, that hurt. That was, that was dumb. <laughs> so here's the fiery furnace. Nobody wants to stick their hand in it. So if I threatened to throw you in an entire room of fire, you would do anything I told you to, wouldn't you? Yep. Yes. For the most part, they, they did. So all right. So ladies and gentlemen, the king has declared that the music be played and we bow down to the idol. So music play. And everybody's bowing. Everybody's bowing. And everybody's bowing. Everybody's bowing. Wait. Wait. Hold it. Hold it. Well, see, some of the king's leaders, some of the king's uh, the hierarchy, some of the king's big time uh, fellows, some of the king's leaders, found out that there was three guys that were not obeying the king's rule. Now, if there's anything that's going to make the king mad, it's going to be disobedience. The kings do not like it when you disobey the law that they have put out there. So the king said, bring those guys to me. So here they are coming up here. They come in. They say, yes, king, what would you like? Now, see, these guys actually work for the king. They had a job working for the king. So when he found out it was them, he thought, okay, it's no big deal. They just didn't understand. I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going I'm to say, we're going to do it again. We're going to let the music play. Let fire up the bands and let the bands play. We're going to bow down to the aisle. Give them a chance. Music play. Everybody's bowing. Everybody's bowing. And the three Hebrew children are not bowing. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. King told him, he goes, you guys know what's going to happen if you don't obey me. Right? But you know what they said? They said, look, King, we cannot obey you because we can't, we can't give away. Our... Now, hold that. No, you better not hold that here. Back up. He said, the guy said, you know, no matter what you do to us, King, we cannot betray the one true God. Which I thought was funny as I was... Uh, as I was going through some stuff, I was looking for uh, an outfit, and I came across something that I used in vacation Bible school. The Ten Commandments. What's commandment number one? You shall not, you shall not have no other gods before me. Before me, I'm the God. I'm God, and there's nobody going to be before me. So they knew that. They knew they couldn't obey that. They told the king, King, we're sorry. Do what you have to do. But we're not bound down to your idol. And if you throw us into the fiery furnace, God's going to deliver us. And if God chooses that he don't want to deliver us, then we're going to go to heaven and see God. And they were fine with that. Hey, we may die, but we're not betraying the true God. So, you know what the king said? He's going to take his flame, his little fire, his fiery furnace. He said, guys, told his, told his uh, guards, where's my guards? I got guards. Where are they Send out the guards. Oh, the perfect guards. All right, go up there. Here, you you stand over there by your idol. You boys, scoot back some. Back towards the piano. You girls go stand on, or you guards, go stand on each side of the steps there. They were in charge of the fire furnace. It was their job to handle it. King Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what? If you're not going to obey me, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not only going to throw you in the fiery furnace, but I'm going to heat it up seven times hotter. Fiery furnace. Seven times hotter. You guys get it? Everybody's back. Point that at my face. I'm going to hurt myself. I like it here. Fiery furnace. Seven times hotter. So how many would rather get burned like this and to get burned by that. I don't want to get burned by any of it. But the king said, you know what? You don't want to obey me? Heat it up seven times higher. So 
That's what they did. And the guards threw the three Hebrew children, throw them in there one at a time. They shackled them up. They bound them up. I got some chain. We can't throw them. So we're going to take take a shed rack here first. I'm just picking my pocket. Here. Alright, first guy in, Shadrach, get in. Throw him in. Second one, Meshach. Heat it up. Get that smoke going. Throw him in there. Now, the Bible says that the fire was so hot. Now, you guys say, how hot was it? Okay, so here we go. The fire was so hot. It was so hot that it says it consumed the guards and it killed them. That's how hot the fire was. That the guards, so, hey ladies, I forgot to tell you. What? That you're gonna die. That, that you're gonna die. Yeah, so. Okay, act dead. They can both act dead. Do it. You just got burned up by fire. Oh. All right, so they're going. They gone. So hot that it killed the guards. King Nebuchadnezzar decided he needed to go check and make sure that he disposed of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So King goes over towards the furnace. He don't want to get too close because his guards just died. King, I'll throw you in, but not, that's not part of the story. He looks into the fire. He said, wait a second. He gets his, his other guys that are still alive because they didn't get close to the fire. He says, wait. Didn't King, 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 King. Did you not throw three men into the fire? It was three. And who, who was it? So you threw three men into the fire, but wait a second. I see something different. There's four men in the fire, and he said one of them looks like the God of the Israelites. Guess what? Bring him out. Bring him out. That's what he brought him out. Brought them out of the fiery furnace. They're alive. You can't just leave them in there. Bible says that they came out. Turn around. Spin around for them. Look at his hair. Come here. Spin around. Oh, here. You're still bound up. Let's get you in the middle. Turn around. Show them. Doesn't look burnt. Come here. Guard are still in there. They, they are good at being dead. They are very good at it. I think we could all sneak out right now and they wouldn't even know. And then Ethan, turn, or uh, Bendigo. Turn around. Does he even look burned? No, no. Do you have any burns on you? They gotta smell like smoke. They don't smell like smoke. What happened? What do they smell like? I don't know. This is not a question. Holy cow. Praise the Lord. They came out not burned, not not hurt, not even smelling like smoke. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Because guess what happened? What? Because the God of the Israelites knew who they were. He didn't leave them nor forsake them. I was thinking of something. Sometimes in life, you get it. You guys got. Grace asked you, how many has best friends that you tell everything to? And a lot of you raise your hand. There was a, uh, I know someone that had, quote, best friend. And that best friend was trying to get them to do things that if they would have done it, that their parents would have been very upset. And they kept on them. Like, you got to do this. You got to do this. Like, no, I can't do this. Well, you know what? They had a choice. To be like Shamrock, Meshach, and Abednego, to stand strong, say, you know what, no matter what, I'm not going to do it. Or to fall into the temptation and then get in all the struggle. Do you guys know that if Shamrock, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't have said, we're only going to serve our God, do whatever you want to us, that story may not even be in the Bible. Well, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Because they would be dead. But because they obeyed God, because they served Him, because they stood strong on their faith, did you know... Christ is a rock. And anything that's on that rock cannot be shaken. 
Remember when we did the lesson on the foundation? Right. If you stand on that foundation, no matter what comes at you, it cannot knock you off that foundation because Christ is the rock. Amen. The reason Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made it through that fire, made it through that fiery furnace, is because they stood on a rock. They proclaimed, King, do what you want. I don't care. We like it. But if you're going to throw us in the fire furnace because we're not serving your God, then you throw us in the fire furnace and my God will deliver me. And guess what? Their God delivered them. That same God that was 2,000 years ago on this story that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered is the same God that's here right now Amen. in the midst of the sanctuary walking through saying, you know, I know them. I know her. I know her. I know him. I know him. And you know what? If you stand on me, if you depend on me, I will deliver you from anything. One thing that I was taught in school, here's a, here's a fiery furnace. You know, fiery furnaces back then may have looked like that. Fiery furnaces now don't always have to look like that. Fiery furnaces can be a test. That's your fiery furnace. Do I want to cheat and get an A on the test? Or do I want to take the test honestly and maybe only get a, a B or a C? But you still passed it. Do you, want to, do you want to stand for integrity? Or do you want to fall for whatever? And you know what? I'll tell you something about cheating in school. You're going to get caught. Amen. And you're going to get... How do I know? Because I cheated in school. And I got caught. And I got in trouble for it. And I had to go back and repeat everything that I cheated on. Why did it get me? Did it get me any farther by cheating? No. No, it took me so much farther back. Well, that's good. They don't cheat. Because you know what else I learned? And I didn't depend on this. See, I, I leaned on my own understanding. I did my own thing. I, I tried to follow my own plan of how I wanted to pass the test. I have, not, no, I have not studied for a test before and passed it. You know how I passed it? Well, I don't want to say that I haven't studied. I've studied for tests but didn't feel like I was going to pass it. I didn't feel like I knew it. I worked hard, but I thought, there's no way I'm going to pass this test. I, I just, I don't know it. There's no, I've worked on it, but there's no way I'm going to pass it. And I prayed. And I asked God, I said, God, help me pass this test. And guess what happened? I passed it. I didn't make, you know, I didn't make an A on it, maybe. I didn't make 100% on it, maybe. But I passed it. And you know what? I'm 30 years old. Are you guys awake now? You can get up. You girls can get up. Give them a hand. They did a great job. Life is still going to be full of those tests, just like Shamrock, Meshach, and Abednego went through you're still going to pass it. Everybody that's up here, you guys can go have a seat. If you got a costume on, if you just step in the door, Amanda, let them take it off. And then you come back out here and sit down because we're going to we're gonna give an altar call. Life is full of those tests. And you have to choose if you're going to go to the right or go to the left. You follow right, you pass. You, you go left, you don't pass. Do we want to live for God? Do we want to stand on His Word? Do we want to depend on Him? Do we want to fully rely on what His Word says that we can get through anything? Or do we want to do our own thing? And I'm telling you what, if you try to do your own, boys, listen to me. If you're trying to do your own thing, it will never work out. But if you do God's thing, it's always going to work out. Everybody by your heads for just a second.